hey guys welcome back to another video and welcome if you are new for those of you who are new i'm your girl shayla and today i'm sure you guys can tell by the title we will be talking about oh how many ways do i have 15 ways to start keto yes keto if you guys are new to my channel and not and or have not checked out any of my previous videos keto is how i was able to lose 85 pounds and still on the journey to lose more body fat not necessarily weight so let's go ahead and hop into this video if you guys are interested stay tuned all right so i have my phone down here guys because i did write notes i wanted to make sure that i did not skip over any points or anything like that so if you see me looking down that's what i'm looking at my first tip well first of all let's get into what keto is um keto is a high fat moderate protein low carb diet yes and i am living proof that it works keto may not be for everyone but baby it worked for me so in order to do a keto diet you must be into ketosis now i'm gonna say this ketosis is not a food keto is not a food Say for you one more time to be in ketosis or to be on a ketogenic diet it is not a food ketosis however is a metabolic state characterized by raised levels of ketone bodies in the body tissue which typically pathological which i'm sorry which is typically pathological in conditions such as diabetes or may be the consequences of a diet that is very low in carbohydrates. So that is what it means to be in ketosis. It is a metabolic state. It is not a food. Now, let's go into what i believe 15 ways to start keto is just going to bring my notes back up here for you guys so my first 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 one is research 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 do your research a lot of people think keto is a fad diet that's because a lot of people just jump into something without researching they only seen it from somebody else or heard it from somebody else but never took the time to do their own research keto works different for everybody it may not be for everyone but you have to do your own research so you can find out what works for you when um or should i say before i started keto i researched it for four months because i wanted to be successful i didn't want to hop into something and then two weeks later be like yeah no i'm done so when i say research sis bruh i mean research um, number two, this is an iffy one for me, but number two is you want to make sure you have your macros in check. And I'm going to tell you guys why I say it's iffy for me. So you want to have your macros calculated and you will do that based on height, weight, BMI, and your age. You can find multiple sites online for free that will assist you in calculating your um macros one of the sites that i had used was ruled rules dot me um when i first started but um you can use anything literally you just google um keto macros calculator and that'll help you now the reason why i say this is iffy for me is because when i first started keto i did my macros for the first two weeks and I'm like a lazy person, right? When it comes to stuff like this, I don't really like to calculate macros and all that stuff, right? So I did it for the first two weeks. I pinpointed what I could eat and what I can't eat. And then after that, I just did my own thing, right? But if you try and do that and you see it's not working for you, then baby, get those macros in check. 
and technically you are supposed to redo your macros after every 15 pound weight loss yes it changes based on your weight so you definitely want to recalculate your macros after every 15 pound weight loss don't be like shayla don't be like shayla yes it worked for me but i could probably be further along have i took time to like follow macros maybe i'll visit that one day all right so number three restore your electro lights i cannot say that enough if you do not restore your electrolytes, you are going to be experiencing symptoms of the keto flu. Thankfully, I've never had the keto flu, but I've seen people go through it. I've heard people having it and it don't sound pretty. It don't sound fun. So just make sure your electrolytes are on point. Now, if you do not know, the three electrolytes you want to restore is going to be sodium potassium and magnesium now for sodium if you do not restore these electrolytes you will be feeling fatigue weakness headaches and difficulty concentrating yes now for potassium if you don't restore this you can have muscle cramps muscle twitching and heart palpitations so be sure to get in these electrolytes now for magnesium it's going to be muscle cramping or twitching at night or after exercise that is still big like you want to restore these electrolytes you don't want to have these feelings it's not cute it's not cool like sis just make sure you restore those electrolytes Arbra, who you know whoever watching this video make sure you restore your electrolytes Number four is going to be sure majority of your carbs are coming from vegetables. Now, this is one thing I didn't do because I don't want the video to be extra long, but you can't have all vegetables on keto. Leafy greens, good, um, but like potatoes, corn, sweet peas, stuff like that you can't have. So you definitely want to make sure you Google, do your research to see what vegetables are good when doing a keto diet and which ones aren't. Some of those vegetables are still high in carbs. Number five, you should be trying to eat mostly grass-fed organic meats. Did you hear me? Mostly organic grass-fed meats. We should be practicing that, uh, practicing that period just because you know what's going on in the world. They're putting so much stuff in our meats that we do not need. But you know, if you can't afford it, definitely try and get that grass fed organic meat. If not, then you know, do what you got to do. But you also want to check your meats, and no meat should have more than two grams of carbs. If your meats have more than two grams of carbs, then you know for a fact that they're adding way more to that meat than they should be. So be sure to check that label. Even though I don't really do macros, I do still check labels on everything. Even stuff I'm buying for my kids and my husband because I am the only one that's like full keto in my house. Number six is you want to limit the amount of dairy you intake. Yes, you can still have cheese, sour cream, you know, all that good stuff, butter on keto but you definitely don't want to overdo it so a lot of people have seen that if they intake too much dairy they might have a plateau in their weight loss or it can cause them to be bloated so you just want to make sure you watch the amount of dairy that you are intaking and me I, i'm gonna keep it real y'all i do have dairy just about every day um especially if it's cheese but just make sure you watch the amount that you intake number seven is find what works for you like i said keto is not a food ketosis is not a food it's a metabolic state so find what works for you simple as that um there's people call it strict keto lazy keto dirty keto Ah. Uh, I know I guess in the beginning I can say I was definitely like strict strict keto like I would not budge wouldn't try nothing I was strict with it but then you know I slowly started going like dirty keto lazy keto 
um you know basically just paying attention to the net carbs and i would be lenient on some of the ingredients that was in the food like for instance if it has soy you know stuff like that but find what works for you and you know roll with it and speaking of what i said above earlier so the way that i did keto is i did 20 net grams of carbs that is what i stayed at or below and a lot of the times it was always below because once you're like really into like full ketosis mode you you stay full a lot but let's go ahead and move on to number eight which is something I've already said, be sure to read labels as some foods may have hidden ingredients or extra carbs. Extra carbs meaning sugar. Sometimes they have a way to put in these big words or words that you can't really read and nobody takes the time to understand them. So you just kind of want to pinpoint those words and learn what's in your ingredients because it may say sugar free or it may not have sugar or you know anything of that nature but really it does they just used a better word for it and they are able to put that there's no sugar or zero carbs because of that so be sure to read those ingredients and you know not just checking for carbs but you just kind of want to understand what you're eating period yeah that that's a good idea all right so number nine you want to get an app that you can use to track your food if that's going to make you more successful i am on and off with this like sometimes i'll try i definitely did it the first two weeks just to kind of see what i was intaking but um sometimes i might throw something in there but like i told you guys i'm like go with the flow don't really want to be doing all that but um so you can do like my fitness pal card manager life sum there's a lot of apps out there you can just google it and you'll find what works for you number 10 is you want to avoid excess use of sweeteners there's a lot of sweeteners monk fruit stevia stuff like that that you can use um but you want to use it in moderation because once again that is something else that can stall your weight loss and put you in a plateau and you'll be wondering like what am i doing wrong and that can be exactly what it is so just limit the amount of sweeteners that you do intake number 11 take progress photos take progress photos you want to document your journey for motivation with keto it is possible that the number on the scale will not move but you'll see that your clothes are fitting looser that's because keto is not always it's not only about weight loss you lose a lot of fat with keto so although that number on a scale may not be going down your inches are most likely changing so take progress photos document and make sure you're measuring yourself because you will see a difference one way or the other i promise you number 12 don't expect life changing results overnight this is very important because a lot of people will see that somebody may have lost 20 pounds in one month or 30 pounds in one month you got to understand that everybody's body is different what works for one person may not work for you you may not have as much to lose as that person so you may not be as lucky to lose 15 20 and 30 pounds in the first month when i started i did lose 17 pounds in the first month but you also have to think at least like five to eight pounds of that was probably water weight if not more so think about it that way but don't let what you may or may not lose discourage you um you also have to understand that this is not a fad diet i mean to me it's not even a diet it's a lifestyle change so you have to live like it's a lifestyle change and that will definitely help you so going on to number 13 keep it simple keep it simple especially in the beginning of your journey you don't want to be doing too much to the point to where you're overwhelmed and you're just kind of over the process so be sure to keep it simple like i promise y'all when i first started keto um me and my husband travel a lot for work so when i first started keto we would be at the hotels and stuff and i'm like 
I don't know. So I would literally get me a Caesar salad and buffalo wings. I ate that a lot in the beginning of my journey because I was still learning what foods work for me, what to eat while traveling, like on the road and stuff like that. So I ate that a lot. But keep it simple. You don't want to be out here trying to make 10 course keto meals. You know what I'm saying? And what if you don't like it? It's good to incorporate stuff slowly but definitely keep it simple in the beginning so you don't overwhelm yourself number 14 you want to use healthy fats a lot of people think that keto is a just is just about eating meat nope um it's a high fat diet so you want your fats to be coming from good fats so some of the good fats are olive oil coconut oil avocado oil mct oil etc there's a lot of good oils out there you can incorporate them by cooking with it you can incorporate them by putting it in smoothies there's so many different ways to incorporate it some people do bulletproof coffee with some of these oils or even butter it's so many different ways out there to get some of these good fats in just make sure you do your research and stay on top of it 15 we've made it to 15 my last and final tip for you when starting keto I want to make sure you guys hear me and hear me clear. Let me look at my phone because I want to make sure that I say word for word how I wrote it. Keto is not about eating meat all day. A lot of people have this assumption that keto is just eating meat and cheese all day. That is not what keto is about. You can still practice a ketogenic diet a ketogenic lifestyle and be pescatarian vegetarian and vegan so what does that tell you it is not about eating meat and cheese all day there are a lot of people who have been successful with keto being a pescatarian a vegetarian and a vegan so do not let anyone think that you need to sit and eat meat all day Although most meats have a good amount of fat in them, especially when you go to like salmon and stuff like that. But, you know, do your research. But you want to get majority of your good fats from some of those good oils that I named earlier. It's not about eating meat all day. Honestly, you want to have at least seven cups of veggies a day. Did you know that? So keto, once again, my friends, are not, it, I'm sorry, is not about eating meat all day. So don't let anyone think that, or don't let anyone let you think that you should just be sitting around chewing, eating on bacon or steak or burger, you know, all that, all day. That's not what keto is about. And, you know, to be successful, I just want to make sure everyone knows that it's not about eating meat all day because there are a lot of people out there who don't eat meat. There are a lot of people out there who don't do dairy. You know, pescatarians, vegetarians, and vegans. You can still be successful at keto without eating meat and cheese. If you guys are wondering how, I'm sure there are a lot of videos on YouTube where you can see vegetarian, pescatarian, or even um, vegan, keto-friendly people. But you can also go to my friend Google and do your research search if you don't take nothing else from this video make sure you do your research before jumping into this keto once again is not a food the ketogenic diet is not a fad but it is a lifestyle you can't be keto monday through friday and carving it up on the weekends it won't work for you it will damage your kidneys if you're hopping in and out of ketosis so remember that but those are my 15 tips for you guys. I really hope that this video can assist someone who is on their keto journey. It has done wonders for me, but I will talk about that in another video. Please be sure to drop down below in the comment section if you guys have any questions about my keto journey and what it has done for me and i'll be sure to incorporate that into my video on how keto has helped me um please be sure to smash that like button let me know you here let me know you enjoyed this video 
be sure to share and subscribe you want you want to turn that subscribe button from red to gray and i'll be sure to catch you guys in my next video but you had me from the start by the way you stared, the way you wrote up for me, yeah, yeah Man, I felt your energy Wasn't used to being loved and treated different